from around 60. Here goes, full ABS. Oh, I loved that. The Brembos are so powerful. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 24 Dodge Hornet RT. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. The Hornet is Dodge's all new small crossover and is sort of a vision of the future of Dodge without the Hemi V8 muscle cars. Up front, we have some signature Dodge cues like this mail slot grill. Above that are the hash marks in red. There is some functional cooling in the center, but these side vents are fake. Above them are LED reflector headlights with LED DRLs and turn signals. Up on the hood are functional vents and hard cut lines. This paint job is called Acapulco Gold with some metallic flake, and it's a decision you could make, not one I personally would. At the side with the track package, we have these upgraded 20 inch gloss black wheels with red painted Brembo four piston front brakes. Wrapping over those wheels are Michelin Pilot Sport all season tires, 235 section front and rear. The Hornet shares its underpinnings and silhouette with the Alfa Romeo Tonale, and while attractive, it would look so much better without that wheel gap. Thankfully, Dodge will sell a set of factory lowering springs through direct connection. This RT trim has a charge port door on the left hand side in addition to the fuel door on the right, and Dodge says from a level two outlet, you can replenish the battery in just two and a half hours. Here at the back are more signature Dodge cues like the LED tail light bar with hash marks and your LED turn signals above a dark gray painted diffuser with two large chrome exhaust outlets. The Hornet styling is reserved from many angles, but still attractive, especially at the front. My question for you is whether you like the new Dodge design, and I'm not just talking about the Hornet, but also that SRT Banshee EV muscle car. Let me know in the comments, and let's check out the interior. Opening up, and whoa, oh, I forgot about that. Um, the door flares out with this extended window trim piece, so you have to be paying attention, otherwise you'll hit yourself in the jaw. And looking inside at this RT Plus trim interior with black leather seating surfaces and Alcantara inserts that are perforated with red backing. On the doors, hard plastics up high and low. Got this leatherette padding here with red contrast stitching and this textured plastic trim. The Plus models get a Harman Kardon 14 speaker sound system. They're also one touch up down windows. Stepping in, not too bad. Behind my own seat at six feet tall, I do not have much knee room. The seat back is all in leather. There's a nice map pocket and good sized foot pockets. Unfortunately, thigh support is still lacking somewhat. Headroom is not though. Head clears the roof. That gets the thumbs up from me. And in the center, we've got air vents with two USB ports, one A, one C. If you wanna try to fit in a middle passenger, you could do that. My head clears here as well. I'm not gonna say three full-size adults in the back would be comfortable on a long journey, but it's enough room for your quick lunch break. Armrest comes down with leather padding and two cup holders as well. Let's go to the front next. Door close noise. Has a little pop to it, but is otherwise pretty solid. Smart keyless entry for the front two doors. The front seats add these red stitched hash marks on the headrest, plus seat heating and multi-way power adjustments. This particular vehicle has a sunroof delete, but normally that's here on the RT Plus, in addition to aluminum accents for the tread plates and foot pedals. The front doors have this piece in injection molding, not hard plastic, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors, and three positions of memory for the driver's seat. Hit this button to deploy the trunk lid. And inside, find a camp chair that I left in here and 23 cubic feet of space. And now that the chair has been magically removed, you're not supposed to show that, Miles. There's a cargo area underneath the floor and a place to kind of just hold the lid for a second. If you want to fold down the seat 60-40, the cargo cover is going to be in the way of you reaching those latches. So you'll have to open up the rear doors, then fold them down and they don't go completely flat. There is also a power close and lock feature on the trunk lid and the camp chair is back. How? Hopping in the driver's seat and enjoying the view of this Alfa Romeo style leather wrapped wheel with notches at nine and three. It is also heated. It's got a flat bottom to it. Your E-drive modes are here on the wheel and on the back of the wheel, also borrowed from Alfa Romeo, are these massive aluminum paddles. If those don't make you feel sporty, what does? As standard, we've got a digital gauge cluster that is reconfigurable. 
No head-up display, and the upper dash does feel kind of cheap, but the lower dash has leather and contrast stitching. As standard as a 10-inch touchscreen with the Uconnect 5 software, it's very responsive, and the visuals are beautiful with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Beneath are some physical climate controls. You've got a wireless charging pad, two USB ports, one A1C, a DC outlet, leather topping your gear selector, and I like that they primarily use this flat black trim instead of gloss black because it wears better. There are two cup holders under the leatherette top console. We have a very deep storage cubby, though it isn't all that wide. Visibility is solid up until you get to that back pillar, which is a blind spot. Thankfully, you've got standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. Overall, this cabin is reasonably spacious. It's tech literate and handsome, but at 52,000 as tested, I question some of the trim choices. Now let's take the Hornet RT for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. Oh, the chime is so loud. And you hear it more because the Hornet RT always starts in either hybrid or e-drive mode depending on where you left it. Even if you leave it in e-save mode, it'll default to one of those two. And so the gas engine isn't kicked on initially, and you just hear that kind of obnoxious chime. <laughs> and on that note of positivity, hello cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this drive in the 24 Dodge Hornet RT. Our drive modes, we've got one over here, the sport button, but on the wheel are your e-drive modes. And speaking of positivity, I can't say anything really nice about the interaction with this button. It doesn't feel that high quality, and there is occasionally a delay changing the modes. Like there, I hit the button, and it takes a while to actually move on to the next mode. So if you're hurrying it, trying to get to from hybrid to e-save, for example, then you might overshoot it. It should be a dial instead my personal opinion. We are going to start out in the electric mode and the EPA rates the Hornet RT at 32 miles of range on a full charge. Right here it says we've got 26 miles of range at just over three quarters left in the battery pack so that that matches up nicely. We'll pull it into reverse next and that brings up a surround view camera system here off to the left and a few different rear and front angles to choose from including trajectory lines. I will pull up the wide angle rear view, my favorite view. For safety and then we'll take it down into drive and kick things off with the turning radius test wheel fully cranked Ooh, bring back up the surround camera for all-wheel drive it's not all that bad turn signal sound it's it's like got a, a twang to it. Very peculiar. And the world famous horn test. Ooh, that, that sounds like something's loose. It's, it's under duress. Powertrain in the Dodge Hornet. The GT model uses a two liter turbocharged four cylinder to make 268 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. That's routed through a nine speed automatic gearbox to all four tires. This RT model has an electric motor powering the front axle and a 1.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder powering the rear axle. The combination gives us 288 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. But there's a little asterisk there because only do you get 288 horsepower when you're in the power shot mode where you've pulled both paddles and you have for a 15 second interval the extra 30 horsepower bump. That means normally the RT is using 258 horsepower, meaning the RT actually makes 10 horsepower less than the GT most of the time but at least the RT does always make that extra torque and like the GT it is all-wheel drive though from a different means and unlike the GT it's got a six-speed automatic not a nine-speed here in electric drive mode you're really just operating a 121 horsepower front drive EV and that's enough for scooting around town, but not much more than that. If you ever did need the maximum output at your disposal, you do full throttle, go past the kickdown, 
and the gas engine kicks on. Now, if you can avoid the kick down, then you will stay in electric drive mode until obviously your range runs out or you exceed 84 miles per hour. And that does mean you could take the RT onto the highway in electric mode, but thinking about the lack of power you have and also thinking from a commuter's perspective, it makes much more sense to utilize your electric range on city streets and then use either the hybrid mode or e-save mode on the highway. As far as ride quality is concerned, this RT with a track package has two stages of dampening and right now in the more comfortable setting, the ride compliance is terrific. It's a little bouncy over undulating road surfaces, but the bumps and ruts don't really rattle you. Even on these 20 inch wheels, the seats are pretty comfortable. I wish there was a little more thigh support as the speeds pick up, staying in electric drive mode, listening for the NVH level. You get some wind noise and as the tires go over bumps, you hear that. But for the price point of where this vehicle starts, not where it's as tested at 52K, this is quite good. As I move now into the hybrid drive mode, I'll note two things the Hornet RT lacks that some plug-in hybrid EVs have. One would be regenerative braking of really any kind. If I take my foot off the throttle, despite the fact that we are on a slight uphill, there's not a whole lot of slowing that actually happens. And two, there's no way to charge the electric battery with the gas engine. There's not a mode for that. The only way to actually charge it is to plug it into an outlet. And I kind of wish it had that so that you could kind of gamify the system a little bit and have it maybe charging on the highway at higher speeds to then use the electric energy for city streets. I will say that the Hornet RT does perform the handoff between gas and electric power seamlessly. So it's prioritizing electric energy in most circumstances apart from when you're coasting or when you're going full throttle. And when the gas engine is at play, you don't feel it kind of coming on. You hear it because it's not a sonorous note. The engine sounds like it's working pretty hard. But you don't feel the disruption of it coming into the equation. But with an RT badge, this vehicle can't really just get away with being kind of smooth. It has to be exciting to drive when you put it in the sport mode. So I'm hitting that and pulling out both paddles for the power shot. We see the icon on the dash and I'm going to hit it. That was a long delay before it recognized that I was going full throttle. But now, now it's really moving. Okay. I'll power shot it one more time and see if it delays again. Here we go. And again, it took a second, not as long that time. And when it has everything going, it's quite quick. Not sure how I feel about the delay though. I'll try it without power shot, just putting my foot down. largely the same experience, a hesitancy there. Can manual mode solve the problem? I'll move the gear select over and then utilize these lovely large aluminum paddles. That was a quicker shift. Upshift. Ooh, that definitely took a second after I pulled the paddle. So the workaround is to pull the paddle earlier. Another downshift. Not as sluggish that time. Still, I'm getting a delay after putting my foot all the way down on the throttle, which suggests, I don't know, I'm, I'm in the, the rev range of peak torque from this gas engine, so the turbo should be spooled up, it should be ready to go. It feels like, honestly, a conflict between the powertrains, like the electric powertrains, like, oh, I'm gonna go, and then the gas engine's like, no, I'm gonna go. Uh, oh, I guess we should go together but all of that taking time from after you just say, go.
Very bizarre. Can't say I like it. But hope is not lost because I've got a real world 0 to 60 test just ahead for the Hornet RT to potentially redeem itself. And my race box is set up to record in the sport drive mode. I'm going to power shot it and brake boost it for the best results. Here it goes. Some tire spin. And there's 60 in 6.03 seconds. Now we're talking. Now getting to 60 quick is one thing, but stopping from there is another. So from around 60, here goes full ABS. Oh, I love that. The Brembos are so powerful to restrain 4,200 pounds as well as they did and to have the confident feel of that pedal. Excellent. Now to evaluate the handling. Oh, I already don't like the steering. It's as if there's a double turn in, like you turn the wheel and then there's some artificial resistance from this electric power steering rack that doesn't tell me much of anything in terms of grip. It genuinely feels like the lane keep assist system is on, like it's correcting me back into the lane, which I know it isn't. This just kind of sucks. Doing my absolute best to see past that. The braking performance from those Brembos is aided by these upgraded tires with this track package, these Michelin Pilot Sport All Seasons hold grip well, and this adaptive suspension, or rather two-stage suspension, now in its firmer setting, curtails the body motions of this taller riding small SUV expertly. And talk about a mixed bag. We've got these delightful aluminum paddles that are so fun to activate, but don't prompt quick shifts. We have this potent electric and gas hybridized powertrain that is in no rush to give you the full goods when you go full throttle. And then we've got this two-stage suspension that is both comfortable around town and then firms up nicely to keep the body in check through curves, but the handling is weighed down by this steering that's just awkward to use and not communicative when you're driving this vehicle enthusiastically. And that's going to lead into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 24 Dodge Hornet RT is erroneous, meaning mistaken or in error. And I'm referring primarily to the RT part of this vehicle, because as we've come to know RT, at least in recent memory, that meant a V8 under the hood. And I don't expect this vehicle to wedge a V8 under the hood, but I do expect a similar level of transformation that the V8 made for previous models in terms of the attitude and the driving fun of the vehicle. This electric powertrain does not transform the Hornet, at least not in the arena of performance that I feel like is Dodge's goal here. From an efficiency standpoint, yeah, you're getting an all electric driving range and improved fuel economy. But if that is your main objective, there are some better options for you that I'll get into momentarily. But first, let's talk top speed, fuel economy, and starting prices. The top speed for the Hornet RT is 128 miles per hour, and the fuel economy with the electric powertrain supplementing is 77 combined MPGE. And without it, when you've drained that battery, you've got 29 combined MPG with that 32 miles of electric range. The starting price for the GT model, the non-electrically assisted model, is 32,000 bucks. If you want the RT, it's 42 grand. And this one as tested is RT Plus with the fancy paint job, it's $52,400. Competitors in this plug-in hybrid compact SUV space include the Toyota RAV4 that starts at $44,790, makes 302 horsepower, gets to 60 in 5.7 seconds, and has an all-electric range of 42 miles. There's also the Ford Escape Hybrid that starts at $40,500, makes 221 horsepower, gets to 60 in a paltry 7.8 seconds, and manages an all-electric range of 37 miles. And finally, if you want to go luxury, you've got the Audi Q5 plug-in hybrid that is $55,000 to start. It makes 362 horsepower though, gets to 60 in just four and a half seconds, and has an all-electric range of only 19 miles. 
Before I deliver my verdict though, I do want to show you some of the driving assistance features here on the Hornet RT Plus, including adaptive cruise control and steering assistance that will stay in the center of the lane even on a curve like this. It's not a hands-free system, so it is going to ask for me to chime back in with my hands on the wheel. But I'm pleased with how it does staying in the center and providing some relief for you on a long journey or commute. Now for the verdict. If we're discussing plug-in hybrid small SUVs, I wouldn't go with a Hornet RT. This doesn't feel like a true RT, and its efficiency isn't as good as, for example, the RAV4 Prime for just a couple thousand dollars more to start, and this vehicle can balloon past that with options. The RAV4 is giving you more power and more all-electric range. But if we're talking about just small SUVs, then the Hornet GT, with the track package, maybe the black top package as well, around $36,000 as equipped there, is really compelling. With a robust and less convoluted powertrain matched with handsome exterior and interior design, I still may take issue with the steering, but I'd also expect less of a small SUV when it's costing $36,000, not $52K. Which would you guys choose though? Would you have the Dodge Hornet RT? Would you have the Toyota RAV4 Prime? Would you get the Ford Escape plug-in hybrid? Or would you have the Audi Q5 plug-in hybrid? Or would you say, heck with all those plug-in hybrids, I just want a good small SUV for less money. Let me know in the comments and I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time. Power shot.